The procedure for bone conduction is similar to that of air conduction. Bone conduction is very important because it helps us determine the type of the hearing loss, so whether it's conductive, sensory neural, or mixed. If you remember, bone conduction simply tests the cochlea and the auditory nerve. So a bone oscillator is placed on the mastoid bone behind the cochlea, and the cochlea is vibrated, and sounds are um, you know, then interpreted up in the brain. So hearing by bone conduction results from an interaction of stimulating the cochlea in three ways. So there's three things that happen when we vibrate the cochlea using bone conduction. There's distortional bone conduction, where the skull is set into vibration by the bone conduction vibrator, which causes the bones of the skull to be distorted, which in turn distorts the structures of hearing in the cochlea and activates the, um, the hair cells. And the hair cells then send the message up to the brain. So there's distortion moving the whole skull. There's inertia. As the skull is moving, the bones of the middle ear start moving by inertia. And then the middle ear bone, the stapes foot plate, pushes on the cochlea and sounds are sent up to the brain. There's also osteotympanic. So the air in the ear canal starts moving, vibrating, and then that pushes on the middle ear, which then pushes on the cochlea, and sounds get sent up to the brain. So three things are happening that cause this vibration in the cochlea to send sound messages up to the brain. So the bone conduction measurements are most often made by placing a vibrator behind the mastoid bone. Because our skull is pretty much connected, if I put the um, vibrator on the right side of the ear, it will also stimulate the left side of the ear. I could put the oscillator up on the forehead and it will stimulate both ears. So when you're testing by bone conduction, it tests both ears at the same time. There's also the occlusion effect, which you have to worry about. If you have one ear occluded or covered by a, hear a headphone and you do bone conduction on the other side, the occlusion effect might occur in which sounds become louder than they, us than they normally would be. So to avoid the occlusion effect and not have to worry about it, use insert earphones. But this is when you're testing, when you're masking sounds or when you're also testing air conduction. The procedures for testing bone conduction, same for air conduction. You put the vibrator behind the ear and you start your threshold search. You're down 10, you're up 5. Only now you're testing both cochleas at the same time. This isn't a problem unless the ears have different degrees of hearing loss, in which case you need to mask or you need to knock out one ear to test the other. So masking is when you put noise in one ear to distract it so that it doesn't help the other ear when you're doing the testing. Um, when you mask, you get better scores. You get more reliable scores. So if you're reading an audiogram, you want to look for the brackets. That means that the ears were separated and masked. If there's the same degree of hearing loss in both cochleas, then you don't need to mask. 